successful or something. And then through my parents, I was instilled with the concept that, you know, you get good grades and you go to college and you just try really, really hard. And then when you finally get there, that you will be happy. And I did all that. You know, I followed what I thought was this life rule book that was instilled in me that I had to meet these criteria, otherwise I would end up as a failure. And the funny thing is I got, I did everything right. And I got to a point where I thought um, what success looked like. And it, I wasn't happy. Um, and that's kind of the, the deal breaker for a lot of people who are creatively driven. You know, if you're not happy with what you're doing in life, it's going to drain you emotionally as a person. If you are a creative person in any capacity, you can't ignore that call because it will affect every single other thing in your life. Um, it's kind of, it's basically at, at your core, it's who you are. So for me, you know, I put this, this passion on hold for so long. And you know, my passion was YouTube. I mean, you may be sitting in the audience thinking like, well, YouTube be cool, or maybe I want to make a game, maybe I want to you know, start making music, maybe I want to start doing artwork. All these things are very similar, and the journey to do them is, is very similar. So I find myself staring at all these creators that inspired me, the people that I watched at my desk, that I watched when I was in college. You know, they started from nothing, you know, just, a, just a small little seed, and over the years I watched this magnificent tree grow out of it. And I never really, I guess, fully thought that it could be me. That, you know, I never, during that time, I just thought like, well, that's cool, I'm really happy for them, and I enjoy watching their things, but I'm just gonna, you know, constantly ignore that drive or, you know, silence those voices in my head that I should be giving this a go. And in you know, my channel, like I mentioned in the video, it failed many times. You know, I started making YouTube videos in like 2005. When, when the, the platform first came out, you know, my friends made videos. Then we went on a break because obviously we all went in different ways. I rekindled YouTube again when I was in college in you know, 2009, 2010, same thing, fizzled out. Ultimately to the point where I actually decided to start the channel up again while I was working you know, full time at my job. And that's imp it was impossible for me just because I had the type of videos I wanted to make were too I guess grandiose, like there was just so many people who had to be involved, and so I let it, I let it slide. You know, I'm swanky box, I remember this logo in particular, I made a channel, um, made two or three videos on it, and then it was dormant for like two and a half years. And during that time, you know, I got older, and then I watched the people who had started, during that same time that I started, in 2000, what was it, 2013, uh, or no, actually, end of 2012 was when I started uh, the Swanky Box. Like, had already found success, so in some way, shape, or form, or or they had, you know, regardless if they found success, they also moved forward on that journey. They created because they wanted to create, and they didn't let these little things stop them. Like the self doubt, you know, the inner voices telling you, oh, you know, you should be doing this because this is what everyone's telling you to do. And. Eventually it just got to me and I'm like, I have to, if I don't do this now, if I don't try to do it now, I'm never going to accomplish it. I'm never gonna, I'll never forgive myself. It'll be another five years, I'll be looking back and I'll be like, what if? You know, what if, what could have that, what could have been? And that just drove me to, I'm like, I have to throw, it's, it's, it's a weird thing because you work, you know, I worked towards these goals my entire life and then I realized that the goals you work towards were really someone else's idea of the life that I should be living. And I, you know, I let it go. I, I, I try, you know, I basically got in my head that I was going to give this a go. I was going to try YouTube one last time. And so obviously not everyone can leave a job. And it was even for me, it was like, I was like, there's a lot of steps you have to take. So I had, I had pretty much saved up for a very long time. I stopped pretty much doing everything. <laughs> I lived on a, a very uh, shoestring budget because I, I knew that I could only survive a little bit of time before having to figure something out. Obviously there's expenses, rent, food, there's so many different things that we have in our lives. And you know, part of taking this plunge, for me anyways, because I wanted to be 100% saturated in it, was accounting for 
and spending and saving up on things and putting money aside and not splurging on anything. I'm a huge gamer. <laughs> that means not buying games. That means not really going out to activities, seeing movies. Um, because for me, that was worth it in the end. Um, any an extra, that could amount an extra day that I could be creating and trying something. And so then when I, when I did leave my job, I just tried to figure it out. I, you know, I became that cartographer, someone who to draw these the, the directions for himself. And I learned so many things, and I failed so many times. But it was those failures that really got me thinking about you know, why were those failures, or, or were there even failures? And I slowly learned through all those mistakes and kind of, and kind of grew from there. So that's kind of the, I guess, the sort of how I got started in YouTube. Um, but that same formula, like I said, can work you know, in game design, in music and art. And it's, I guess it's not even a formula. It's more so like the same drive to want to produce something. And it's just, it's just something that in, in your soul you can't ignore. And uh, it's, I don't really even know how to describe it really. It's such an interesting thing. And I, it's, it's one of those things you can't actually quantify and actually talk about either, because like, you only know by doing. But for those of you in the room, and I'm, I'm generally curious as well, like how many of you in here have aspirations for doing something YouTube related? Now, how many of you have something, aspirations for game design? Any, any of you in here artists? Anyone a musician? No musicians. <laughs> um, doing any of these things is such a deviation from like the path we think we're supposed to take. Um, and they, they all take a certain amount of, of, of planning and a lot of times you want to quit. So you're, you're making that game, you start off and you have no sense of direction. Obviously games aren't making money right away either. It's a really hard thing to do because you think about you know, having a game and creating a game and we were starting from ground zero just like everything else. And you don't get paid or anything. That's only even if the game is a success as well. But you create it because you have to create it. It's not even like a question. You, like, if you don't create it, then you're going to be super regretful that you didn't. And also these types of things, whether it be YouTube, game design, you know, music, art, they can also be start off as a creative outlet that's pursued by passion, but they can also also you know grow into other things. So as a YouTuber, like for me, when I'm when I'm creating things, a lot of people are like, well, you know, YouTubers they make their money off of advertisements. So when, when someone's watching a video and ad is served up, and the YouTuber gains you know some sort of finances from the ads that are viewed. However, like all these are starting points. Even like a game, like, a lot of times people measure game sales and, and the, well, I mean, the, the money that a game makes is their, is their livelihood. But like so many things can splinter off from these creative endeavors. You can talk at conventions. You can talk about your products, like share your story with other people, inspire the next generation of content creators. Um, that can be a, a, a path that you can take. There's, I'm actually in the midst of writing a book right now because when I, when I uh, decide to take a creative career path, I wish I had a rule book. I wish I had like some sort of outline to follow. Um, and I realized like going through this, there was never any real, I guess, tangible path to follow. And anytime I would look up a guide, it'd be like, this is how you get rich and famous on YouTube. It's like, that's, that's the wrong reason. That's not, and they would never focus on anyone who was actually trying to do something creatively. It was always focusing on the end results. And that's the biggest issue of all, is we look at the games that we love. You know, the, the game devs we look up to, the YouTubers we look up to, those artists that we wish we could be. And we measure them by their end game. We measure them by where they are now. We see Markiplier, you know, the funny Let's Player, and it's like, wow, that's amazing what he has. But then we forget you know, the blood, sweat, and tears, and all the stuff that it took to get there. And that's the most important part, because who they were when they started is, who not, is not who they are now. 
Like everyone changes over time. And it was through all those failures and all those times where they didn't find success that they got back up and they sort of reinvented what they were doing. They tried something different. They saw how their audience responded. Maybe, you know, if you are a musician, maybe like what kind of songs were sticking with your audience? What kind of songs were um, resonating with them? What kind of artwork is resonating with people? What kind of game can I make that is appealing and also moving at the same time, evoking like an emotional response? And that's kind of, that is where you start. But then of course, the biggest question is, you can have all these ideas and these aspirations and then you wanna start and you don't know how to start and then, or you do create your own, your first thing and then no one sees it because there's no one waiting for you. There's no audience, there's no, you don't even know how to reach people. Um, that was the first, you know, the very disheartening for, thing for me is like I studied YouTube so passionately and I knew everything about it. So I thought when I was starting, I'd be like, okay, you, I can make this video about Nintendo music and people are gonna like it. And it's like, no, no one even knew it existed. I would try to share it somewhere and you know, I would get like instantly downvoted. And I realized like, huh, this is way more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. And I think it was just, I, my approach was off. I was, again, I was measuring by the end game. I was seeing how like, oh, this person made a video. He got tons of views on it. Why isn't my video doing that? And regardless of what type of thing you create, your end goal is to make a connection with someone. Like never forget that like the most important thing is to make someone feel something. And I learned that not, I won't even say early on, it was like after a couple of my videos went out that I wouldn't even know I would get emotional responses from people. But that really changed the way that I started creating content, that I started approaching my next video. So I put my audience first, I put the people who I wanted to see the video first. I tried to think about what they were doing on a daily basis, what kinds of things they liked, um, and really just based it off of their feedback. And over time by doing this and, and really trying to make a connection with people, that's when I realized at the core of it, that's what it's all about. I mean, it is entirely about connecting with people and, and getting an emotional response out of them. Like if you're a game, if you're making a game, like you want someone to feel something after they're, they're done playing that game. You want them to tell their friends about that game. And that's more rewarding than anything. And once I realized that was sort of the direction I needed to go, things, I guess, got a little easier because some of my expectations were, were lowered a little bit. Everything I released didn't have to be you know, this grandiose thing. It could just be what it needed to be at the time. Every, still, every little thing you do is a, like a building block. So even if you're making a game and the assets that you're creating, maybe you share them on social media, like all those are like a single Lego that you're stacking brick by brick. You're trying to build this giant statue. Um, and so the stuff you start off with might not even be good at all. You know, you use the, the weirdly colored bricks first, like all the yellows and stuff. They're like, well, this doesn't really fit. These are the odd pieces. That doesn't matter because you're building a foundation. Eventually, you're going, your stronger pieces and the ones you want to use will end up replacing those. So I always tried to visualize the journey of like building like this giant Lego statue. But um, I think if you think of it that way, because so many people are so scared to actually show something and get critiqued for something, whether it be the artwork in the game, your first song, your first picture, that they they. they that stops them from doing anything. And they have to realize that it's, it's, all, it's just a gradual process that by doing things and, and improving and also just not being afraid, those are so, I guess, incredibly crucial um, to just kind of move forward and, and keep creating just because you, you want to create. But at the same time, also be aware that you know, use your creativity as a platform that you can kind of, I guess, I guess branch out from. Be very aware of, I mentioned this earlier, so you have this one thing that you're doing creatively, how could you actually build that into a career? How could you prove to people that, that you know, this isn't a silly endeavor, some guy who just makes gaming videos, you know, this is, it is my real job. 
it is what I do, and you know, a lot of people don't see it that way. Like, how can you actually make that something sustainable, something that you could wake up and do every day? And you can you can find out that you know by using and getting started and creating content of any kind that it can lead to other opportunities. Speaking at conventions, um, for me, for videos, working with brands and stuff like that. There's also, you know, for me, I, I wanted to write a book. The reason why I actually started doing YouTube in general is because I, I, wanted to be an, I wanted to be an author. I wanted to write things. And I had no, no, one, you know, no one knew if my book would exist. So I decided, like, well, if I get a group of people together who like the similar things that I like, chances are they will like the book. Um, so I started creating, you know, building an audience and just finding like-minded people who would appreciate the things that I was doing. And sort of that's kind of what got my gears turning in my head of how I could make this something that I could live off of instead of something that could, I could you know, create and then it would fizzle out. Because I was, I was most scared of it fizzling out. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. Um, in terms of creating, that you can use it as basically building the foundation for so many different things. Because hypothetically, even for me too, it's like uh, if I wanted to make, you know, maybe make a game, it could help for me in terms of exposure. Like, because I, I have aspirations of game design, art, and all these different things, and I could find myself doing all of them, but I had to focus on, you know, the video part of me first, and. Potentially, those could be a launching point in the future. So you know, the, the creative journey in taking this is, is more than just, I guess, chasing after that, that dream. I mean, it can truly turn into something sustainable, something you can grow. Actually, like, you know, creating a YouTube channel or anything, it's really like starting a small business. And it can grow into that, and it can, after time, become something that you can kind of you know, make a living off of. So that's kind of, I guess, a, a little bit of a, an intro of, of my story and sort of what inspired me to, I guess, start talking to people about these types of things. I would really love to hear your own thoughts or questions and stuff of that nature, too, because I want this to be as valuable for you um, as it can be. And you know, lucky for us, we don't have a, you know, it's at the end, of the end of the convention. There's not a whole lot of people here. So we can actually spend some time and talk about individual you know, your questions, what you want to do, and things like that nature. So are there any kind of, any questions or any thoughts on pursuing? Okay. Right so um, staying, for me, for in terms of videos, so the question was, how do you stay creatively motivated? It is, I, I stay true to myself. So when I'm making videos, I always make sure that I am creating something that I'm passionate about instead of going after like the next biggest thing. That's, an, that's important too. Obviously, you want people to go out to, you know, you want to see what people are searching for and, and kind of use that to fuel your creativity. But you know, a lot of people in the YouTube scene, they chase the next trending thing, and they try to make videos on that. But they burn themselves out because they may have had some aspirations for it, but ultimately, they're not that passionate about it. They're just doing it for the clicks, or they're or trying to use that as a way to funnel growth through their channel. Eventually, it will burn them out. It burned me out. I was really involved in Undertale. I love the game. Don't get me wrong. However, I, would keep, I created like eight Undertale videos. And all of them were very successful. However, at that point, I was like, OK, that was fun. I'm done with Undertale. But my audience was like, more Undertale. <laughs> and so I realized I sort of dug myself into a hole because now the audience was expecting something. And that was sort of creatively demotivating because, yes, I enjoyed that game for a set period of time. But I didn't want to just keep creating that because it wasn't what I wanted to do. Like I wanted to, I wanted to wake up and, and just be inspired and create something that week based on what I was inspired about. So for a long time when I was creating content, it was actually based on video and games that I just like 
well, this is a game I remember fondly from my past. Maybe I'll make a video about it this week. Like, so I just chased after my gut reactions. Because also, if you're creating something that you are actively thinking about in a positive way, it's going to show in your video. It's going to show in your work. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just, that's how I, I, I stay motivated, because I just align my projects to the things that are circulating through my mind during that moment. 